of 1985. Frank Bruno was high on the list after his demolition of the Swede Anders Eklund just a few weeks ago. And this crowd sensing that Bruno could be on the edge of victory here. He's got him again with the right and a second one and he's down. Right at the start of the fourth round, ten seconds in. Is he going to beat the county? I don't think he is. He's not coming up. And Bruno is the European champion and he's made his mark in the world. Harold Graham, Britain's middleweight champion, was a definite contender for the way he's been performing. And Hines, although he was trapped on the ropes, had enough of his wits about him to dodge most of the trouble. But he's under heavy fire again. This is the second round, and it might not go much further. Oh, and he hits his head on the canvas as he goes down in the second round. And here comes the favourite, Barry McGuigan, featherweight champion of the world. At every table, new champs and old. Some we hadn't seen for a bit, but the memories were fresh. Who could forget the Cockney Barrow boy, Terry Allen, world flyweight champion, or Roy Anker, the Black Flash from the 50s. Some recent world champions were well qualified to pass opinion. Oh, he's got him with the first big punch. Left hook, the Southpaw's left hook. And Mattioli, the world champion, went down with 15 seconds of this fight gone. Well, in fact, I've got a few, Harry, but for me, the most outstanding uh, thing I can think of in the boxing is uh, Barry McGuigan winning the world title. Tremendous fight. Was. That was some night at QPR, yeah, wasn't it? That is correct, and uh, I think it was a great night for, um, for Ireland. How do you rate Barry McGuigan as a, as a world champion? How high up do you rank, rank him? Well, he's got a lot of ability. I like his going forward aggression and his non-stop punching. And I feel he'll reign for a long while, a good while yet. This place will go wild in just a few seconds. It's Conte, world light heavyweight champion at 23. Well, for me, undoubtedly, it was uh, Barry McGuigan winning the world title, Harry. I thought it was just uh, not only that fight, that one particular fight, but uh, the culmination of all the fights previously, building up to that, and the expectation of all the fans and everything, and the British boxing public, and him uh, winning it. It was a wonderful uh, release, you know, exciting. The author of the yearbook, Barry Hugman, wore out two pens signing copies. It's a massive, well-researched annual. It rivals the century-old wisdom of cricket in its comprehensiveness. Barry, you're close to keeping the records of all these fighters. What, what, what's your outstanding memory of this past year? Oh, I think Barry McGuigan, without a doubt. And the coming fighters coming through the ranks. And the, um, the input into boxing over the last year. It's like Frankie Tiger Taylor and the former British champion Bobby Neal who compared his day with the present. My style was very reminiscent of Barry's in the sense I was attacking, uh, hooking body punches. But the old style British fighters were very much stand upright fighters. Uh, Barry's uh, equipped himself to more international table boxing and that's the reason why he's world champion today. It wasn't all about boxers. There was an award for a major contribution to professional boxing. And that peerless referee, Harry Gibbs, OBE, came up to collect his well-merited trophy. Sadly, Harry gives up refereeing next year. It was so unexpected. I didn't realise. I think you knew, as I've said before. I didn't know. That's the truth. Do you have any idea, Harry, over all these years, how many contests you've actually refereed? Thousands. If you want to include the dot ones, oh, must be millions. Because <laughs> you were a bit of a boxer yourself, weren't you? Yes. That must have helped you over the years, I think, in understanding what fighters are about. Well, I was very lucky. I uh, came home from the war and um, I was in charge of the ABA team. I had uh, boxers like Charlie, Barton, Cooper, uh, Erskine. I had all these wonderful fighters. And some of the names chap was mentioned tonight, tonight uh, 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 this afternoon rather. But I didn't remember, but I had him. I was very lucky. I was made coach of Great Britain. I've had a wonderful life in boxing. My wife's a boxing widow. We come now to the award for the contest of the year. We see the award for the best all-action contest seen in Great Britain in the past year. But Wigan's work has not been so effective in this round. He hasn't found the range. Yes, he did. He's got it with the rock. Oh, the 
champions over in the seventh. He found them with the right. Compulsory eight pounds. Is the title about to change hands? 30 seconds to go. Can McGuigan do it here and now? And the jury decided that this indeed was the contest of the year. And we come now to the announcement of the winner of Britain's Boxer of the Year Award. And the winner is Barry McGuigan. And who should be there to present the award but the man who was Britain's previous world featherweight champion, Howard Winston of Wales, whose great triumph came in 1968. It's over in the ninth round, and Seki, moments after he was cut, has been stopped, and Winston is champion of the world at last, and is the first Welsh world champion for 45 years, and you won't stop the Welsh invading this ring now. Today, McGuigan had picked up two awards. I thought I would have a, a chance in the overall boxing award, but I never thought of, of, of the fight. And then, of course, uh, you know, I realised that I had a chance. I never actually thought about it. Just tremendous to win the two, and, and it was tremendous for, 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 the, for the Eastwood organisation and for the McGuigan family. And for the for boxing in Belfast, it's brilliant. You must be having a hectic time, because I don't, you don't stop working now, do you? I mean, everybody wants you, all the receptions want you. You find well, it very tough. I, well, it's very tough, but I, 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 what I try to do, Harry, is I try to select uh, the few places that I go to uh, well in advance, and so I have a calendar made out. And uh, for example, I'm going to 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 Belfast on on Friday, and I'm signing books on Friday afternoon, and I meet two other people on the same day. So that's uh, you know, it's it, it's all sort of has to be planned well in advance. But it's it's tough work. Do you, do you find that this counts as a rest? I mean, you're supposed to be having a rest sure. between fights. Does this sort of thing count as a rest? Oh, sure. Boxing? Yeah, that's that's my form of relaxation because I enjoy. Uh, somebody said to me today, um, "Did you, you know, how do you, you your social life must be terrible?" And I said, "Well, in fact, I don't have a social life. Uh, what what I do is I go out to these." Uh, How much rest do you feel you want to have before your next fight? Well, first of all, um, Sandra's having the baby in January, so I want to be with her in January, and then it would take me probably a, a month after that to, to, to get into uh, you know, into a training camp. I train all the time, so I'm always in good shape. I've been training since the world title fight. Every day I've been training. I'll train tonight when I go home, and I've, uh, I train every day. And um, it'll only take me a couple of weeks to get into discipline and, and into my training camp and spar loads of, loads of rounds and that. So really, I'd be, I'd be ready to fight in a month's time, but uh, I want to have a, a you know a month with Sandra and relax afterwards and make sure everything's okay, and then I get back into the gym. So we're talking like late February or March. We're talking year. about February probably, uh, sometime in February. Uh, I would hope that I'd be able to fight in uh, maybe late February, early March, or whatever. That must be the longest rest you've had for some time, if it is a rest. Well, it is. It's the longest I've had out of the ring since. Um, Possibly since eighty, since early eighty two, and or late eighty two. So that's it's a considerable amount of time. But you know, I've had I've had four hard fights this year, and um, you know, people don't see the training and the preparation you put into it. And I train all the time, so it won't do me any harm to have a rest. Can I just have a word from you about the chap that everybody's talking about now? Is your natural opponent, yes. Zuma Nelson, the other world champion? Yes, what, do you, what do you make of him? Well, um, obviously he's a very dangerous puncher. Uh, I. I didn't have to see him knocking out Pacquiao Dell to, to, to realise that. But um, I felt that Pat wasn't the same fighter that he normally is. 
I think the, the, taking off that five pound killed him. Um, Nelson's a good puncher, but that punch shouldn't have had the same effect that it had. And uh, obviously, I wouldn't box him that way. And uh, I like let, let him know that Barry McGuigan's a different proposition. You must have seen it, Zuma Nelson, close up because yeah. you were in the Commonwealth Games with him. In, well, in fact, uh, I didn't realise that until 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 later that that he. In actual fact, he won the featherweight the featherweight title here. I won the, uh, the bantamweight title. But uh, I'm looking forward to fighting Nelson, and I hope that he keeps talking the way he's talking, and that in a year's time he'll uh, it'll mean more money to us. Because the more he talks, the more money it means, and that's what the game's all about. He takes two rights at the end, and that surely must be the end of Pedroza's reign as champion. Everybody in the place is acclaiming McGregor, the victor. Barry McGuigan retaining another title. He's the 1985 Boxer of the Year. Incidentally, the award